After about five and a half years and over 1,300 videos, it has come to my attention via the comment section that this video is required. So you might think that we all know what this is. So this is a bagless vacuum cleaner. And I've picked this particular cleaner because I think it represents something that is fairly average and typical in North America. So what is this and what does it do? So this isn't meant to be a video where I cover absolutely everything you know, on the planet as far as vacuum cleaners go. That's not what I mean. This is a general overview video because again, based on the comments that I have been reading over the last few years, we have a lot of misinformation we need to correct. So this is a vacuum cleaner and this vacuum cleaner is and or works based on its ability to agitate dirt out of a surface, in this case, in this case uh, a carpet, but it could be bare floors, and then suck it up and then put it into a bin or a bag, in this case it's a bin, for easy disposability. That's kind of the point of what this is. Now, the funny thing is the name vacuum cleaner, to be honest with you, is misleading because vacuum, right, is a negative pressure. Negative pressure is not a movement. Nothing moves around. So when you see your dirt spinning around in there, so many people actually think that it's the vacuum or the suction that's making that happen because they say constantly, my vacuum has lost suction because they don't see anything spinning, doesn't pick up stuff anymore, doesn't have anything to do in the way that you think with a change of pressure. It has to do with the ability to move something from say carpet, whatever type of flooring you have into a bag or bin. And that is the flow of air. So when you have the airflow slow down appreciably or stop, your vacuum doesn't really lose suction, but it loses flow of air. And when that happens, your vacuum, we typically say is clogged. What do we have to do? We have to go and declog it so it restores the flow of air. Now, what is this actually meant to do? I mean, this is, this is kind of a really, really basic question. So this particular machine, right, there's other different types of machines, but this typical type of machine right here is meant to pick up what? It's meant to pick up dry particulate. Emphasis on dry, okay? Can it be moist? No, not moist, dry, okay? So this particular machine was designed and engineered to pick up dry debris, totally dry debris. Not a little moist, right? Not like something damp, something dry. And it certainly was not meant to pick up water. So if you go and use a machine like this, you're gonna be picking up totally dry material, emphasis on dry. If you're gonna pick up something that's damp or wet, get a machine that is rated for dampness or wetness. Get a water-based machine. There's plenty of them. I reviewed lots of them on this channel. So you've just found yourself in a situation where you got yourself a brand new machine. And let's say for the heck of it, it arrives like this. In other words, you put it together or maybe somebody else put it together, but one way or another, somehow it's actually fully together. It's got all the tools and you know, you name it. What do you do with this particular machine? Well, that's going to be what we're going to do in this next part. Obviously, this machine is not battery powered because there's no battery. It has a plug. And depending on where you are, you might be plugging this into a wall outlet that does maybe 100, 120 volts, 240 volts, but it's got a plug. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull out as much cord as you think you're going to need for the room that you're gonna vacuum in. 
I'm just pulling out a random amount of, uh, of cord here. And then you're gonna take it and you're going to plug it into a wall outlet. Here we have a plug. Notice that the prongs are, well, almost perfectly straight. They certainly aren't going off at an angle one way or another. If you see that, you need to correct that and get them straight because having them either bent in, bent out, or bent in some kind of squiggly position isn't really a good safe way to do things. So now I'm going to plug this into the outlet. So I will take it here and I will plug it in and see that right there? That's not plugged all the way in. Plug it fully into the socket. Make sure it's completely seated. And then when you're done, right, don't just push the little cord retract that's on that machine over there. I'll show you that in a little bit and have that rip it out of the wall, come over to the wall, grasp the plug firmly, not from here, but from here, it's more sturdy and then take it out of the wall safely. So normally what you want to try to do vast majority of the time is start out with your carpet height position all the way up. Okay. This is, this is going to be the, the safest way to do it. So I'll crank it all the way up. That actually will lift the nozzle as far off the floor as it can be. And then start running your machine and then slowly take it down a notch until it begins to contact the carpet. In many cases, as soon as it begins to contact the carpet, by the way, this doesn't apply to Kirby, but this isn't a Kirby if you didn't happen to notice that, then that's where you want it to stay. Uh, I have gotten comments from people recently, and this person was particularly proud that in order to get all the dirt ground out of the carpet, you know what they did? That's right, all the way down to position one. So this creates a huge problem because there's a brush roll in here, there's a bearing there, there's a bearing there, and there's a belt over there and somewhere. And it also attaches to a motor that's well back here, the axle fort's back there. Putting it too far down creates way, way, far, far too much resistance. And that heats everything up and wears everything out, including, but not limited to, ripping your carpet right out. Now, Will putting it down on hard floor, quote unquote, clean better? Technically, yes, but it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater. What happens is you rip your carpet clean out, and as it's ripping your carpet out, it rips more dirt out. So the thing is, is you don't really want to do that if you want to have your machine last for a long time, and you want to have your carpet last for a long time. Now, if you don't care about your carpet, you don't care about your machine, go ahead and run it all the way down. You'll be blowing through machines no time fast, and you'll wonder why your carpet's so thin in an incredibly short period of time. So I always recommend a proper carpet height, and I will do a, a quick experiment in which hopefully you can see and hear what the differences are. I'm gonna start on position five, and then we'll go down from there. Okay, brush roll was spinning, no contact with the carpet. Now let's go to position four. All right, we had little to no contact with position four. Now I'm on position three. easily able to hear that. By the time I got down to position three, it made good, consistent contact with my carpet. An action that I was actually performing there to recline the machine was this rear foot pedal. Now this foot pedal can be over here, over here, various different places. There's going to be something that, if you look in the manual, that is the first thing that people throw away, 
uh, you're going to depress the foot pedal, and of course, that's going to recline the machine. And then when you're done, you put it in the upright and locked position, and the foot pedal obviously clicks to let you know that it's in the upright and locked position, so your machine doesn't fall over. So let's talk about the hose for a minute. So you're using the machine, you're doing whatever it is you're doing. If you're really planning on using the hose and doing above the floor cleaning and your machine has this feature, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that either your brush roll is shut off, right, which you can do by pushing this down, or in some cases, this machine automatically shuts off the brush roll when you put it in the upright position. So if you have those capabilities, make an effort to try to shut off the brush roll if you can. If you can't, in the upright and locked position, usually the brush roll won't do any particular damage to anything because it shouldn't, shouldn't be contacting the carpet. All right, so in this case, you have a hose. All right, so how am I gonna do anything with the hose? Well, as you can see, there's a hose release. So if I push that, the hose then releases. And you have, if you unhook it, a whole bunch of hose. All right, fantastic. And you've got various attachments. And believe it or not, I'll let you kind of figure out which attachment's gonna work best for you. So you'll insert the attachment. If you wanna use an attachment, you'll use the attachment, do whatever you need to do with it, and then put the attachment back and you have this hose. All right, now, say for some reason you want either more length than what you currently have, and this one does have some length, but you see you can get a little bit more length if you fiddle with this, and or maybe this hose has become clogged. Oh no, you've lost airflow. So how do you remove this hose? So let me get this cord out of the way here. It's a little more working room. So you see, this is one end of the hose. It previously was here, right? Now it's, well, loose. Well, you have this little hose keeper right here, and you have a screw, but we want to take it out without that, and you can. So what you're going to do is come up here, and you're going to notice there's a little twist tab. So I'm going to twist and then pull down, and now that releases the hose, and this ho that part of it actually goes up to the bin. So all I do is just simply pull it through. Now in some machines, it's easy to do, in some machines, it's not so easy to do. This one is a little bit fiddly. You know, I've got to twist it a little bit and pull it a little bit, but guess what? It will come out, and now you have the entire hose, and you can do whatever you need with it. This, because everything in here is plastic, right? You can run water through it. You can run, well, another vacuum cleaner uh, through it to go and try to declog it. But do whatever it is you think you need to do, right, to clean it out or whatever, because let's face it, over time, depending on what kind of dirt you have to pick up, this will smell, which will make your vacuum smell. When you're done, then you'll take this and you will push it back through. Twisting it in some cases helps. All right, fantastic. Almost there, almost there. Give it a little twist. Now you need to go and align these little tabs, right? I'm gonna push up and then I twist. There, and that locks it. And I take the rest of the hose, wind it around, and it's kind of sitting there. And when I wanna lock it back in, just push the lock. Obviously, this varies on different machines. Some of them are twist fits. Uh, some of them are different types of things, but the bottom line is that's how you handle it on a machine like this. So you've now finished vacuuming. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to dump it into a trash can. So you have a release button somewhere. Again, every vacuum is different. This particular one has a button on the top and it's appropriately labeled release. So you push it down and then pull out. So I have a couple different ways I can actually empty this. And I did see some well, it's not really fine dust per se, but it certainly is 
my dog Rosie's hair. But if this was particularly full of all kinds of dirt and debris, especially something dusty, what I see people do, and it's hilarious, and I'll even see uh, people do this who run vacuum channels, is they go and they push the release button and they have the bin way, way up here, okay? If you do that, what will happen is the dirt and debris will gain speed and fly out of here and go down into your trash can and then it will bounce back up. That will be somewhat of a problem because it could bounce back up all everywhere and also in your face. So if you can, if you have a deep enough trash can, put this down in here, okay? This is a deep trash can, so I can put it fairly well down in here and empty it inside, right? Very simple. And then guess what? Nothing flies anywhere. So don't sensationalize stuff or watch people's videos that sensationalize things where they have the, the bin four, five, six feet off the ground and go poof, right? Because that's just not very realistic. And then of course you can go and reinsert the bin back onto the cleaner. And guess what? You've got no dust flying up in your face. Now you're done vacuuming, you've emptied the bin, but we need to go over something else. One of the least checked items is the pre-motor filter. Now in this particular vacuum, it's up here, as I mentioned earlier, um, but this video is not intended to cover every single activity that this machine can possibly partake in. So I will release the bin. Then I wanna make this as easy to see as possible. So hopefully you can see, I know it's gonna be difficult. There's a little lock indicator right here. And here's another unlock little icon right there. And notice you have a hole and then you have another hole. So what I like to do is put my thumbs in those holes and then to unlock the top, I just simply twist, and that's pretty easy. If I want to relock the top, then I twist the other way. And that's pretty much it. So let's untwist, right, there we go. And now you can see the pre-motor filter. Now this filter is in really good shape, has a little tab to help you with the ease of removal. And see, there's the underside. Now if this was really clogged up with something, you would see some dust come out, you would see some hair. This filter's in really good shape. Now, it's stained compared to the other side a little bit, but this is still in great shape. This is washable, hence it's got like little faucet symbols on it. And then you wanna go and wash it at some point in time. Say, for example, it, uh, it's not very clogged, but let's say it smells. Uh, and that's just what happens periodically. So you're gonna take this, run it under some water, and then you will squeeze it out, kind of like a sponge, and then you will let it dry. If you have the ability to let it dry in the sun, that's great because it will quick dry a bit faster. And then you go ahead and reinsert it when it's 100% dry. Not slightly damp, don't do anything slightly damp. Leave it for probably at least 24 hours. If you quick dry, it can be shorter than that. So I just go ahead and reinsert it. And I go and take the top, stick it back on here. There, I have it aligned, but it is in the unlocked position right here. Thumbs and then twist. And now the bin is fully reassembled. Something you should also do periodically, especially if you have hair. Now my wife has two foot long hair and it constantly clogs up that brush roll. As you can see, I've turned the machine over, but I can make it a little easier to get to if I go ahead and release the little foot switch there. And I can angle this. Now I can more easily get to the brush roll. Now if something's really bad, you can go and remove the screws here and take the rug plate off. That's a little more of an advanced option out there, but you can see that I got a little bit of hair right here. Not much, not much. And then do whatever it takes to remove the hair. If you need scissors, go ahead and get scissors. 
but keep your brush roll as clean as you possibly can. <laughs> this has a few hairs on it there. It seems like I just picked them up a few minutes ago. But go ahead and actually do what it takes to clean the brush roll. You want to do that because it will extend the brush roll life, of course. The hairs just keep coming. Oh well, we'll have to deal with that later off camera. And this is a fairly clean brush roll. You don't know how many brush rolls I've come across that are completely clogged and have handfuls of stuff wrapped around there. That will reduce your cleaning effectiveness. So yes, periodically, you're gonna have to check your brush roll and go through the unpleasant exercise of pulling the hair out. Now, if you don't have long hair, uh, or it takes you like a year to collect hair in a brush roll, then you don't have to worry about this nearly as much. I'm done with this video for now. It was never meant to be an all-inclusive video that shows you how to do everything that this machine can particularly do. It was rather meant to be just kind of a general overview. So if you like this type of video, it was very helpful, and you want to see me do a video like this with another machine that I have to have in my arsenal, then let me know in the comments below. And I'll make a deal with you viewers. If I get like a thousand views in a real short period of time, then I'll go and pick something, hopefully from your comments, and we'll go ahead and make another video. Now that could be a canister machine, that could be battery powered stick back, it could be a bag machine, you know, whatever happens to be very popular and highly mentioned in the comment section. So until next time, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.